How strong is the Saiyan with the purest heart, Saiyan Saga Goku? very beginning of the series we see someone known as raditz now raditz is a saiyan that comes from a different planet planet vegeta we do learn that the saiyans are a race that goku belongs to and goku doesn't really know much about it they're referring to him as kakarot and they don't even know what that means because his name is son goku and his son's name is son gohan this is named after his grandpa gohan who he ended up killing in dragon ball on accident during his transformation once Raditz comes to this planet, he wants to talk to Kakarot and he wants to fight Kakarot because Kakarot has not completed his mission or what they thought he was supposed to be going there for, taking over this planet and destroying it like the Saiyans will do. Once Raditz comes down to the planet, he, we see him meet them at the island. Master Roshi's there, Bulma's there, everybody's there, Krillin, Gohan, everybody. And Raditz ends up taking Gohan. He takes Gohan and he takes him back to the pod in which he crashed at. This is when Goku will get on his Nimbus Cloud, follow him, and Piccolo will follow Goku. During this fight between Goku, Piccolo, and Raditz, we learn a lot about the power scaling and the power system of Dragon Ball. We learn about key and power levels. Now, the power level indicator is something that Raditz wears, and we learn that power level is something that fluctuates a lot. Power level can fluctuate with the person's mental status, as well as it can fluctuate with the charge of a key. We see the mental status showcased in Gohan. Gohan was very mad that his father was getting his ass beat, and Gohan ended up charging up his power and was actually capable of damaging Raditz, and then it stated that his power level just falls right back down to one. And the charging up of key is shown and showcased through piccolo piccolo is using special beam cannon his final killer move that he has not perfected yet but he is still able to use this is shown because he just sits there charging it up and it's something that he's not capable of doing off of a whim and it's not capable of usage off of his base form given this fact we do know that he's charging up his power and the key can actually be transformed into something a lot greater with that time at the very end of this fight, Goku sacrificing his own life to be able to take out Raditz, which doesn't even fully work because he signals to Nappa and Vegeta to come to the planet, and this is the doom. During this time, we see that Goku ends up going to the afterworld. He goes to the Kai Rome, and he starts training with King Kai. Now, during this training of King Kai, or on the way to the training of this King Kai, we get some very important information about Snake Road. Snake Road is basically just the way to get to King Kai's planet that he stays on, which is 10 times gravity, but very, very small in comparison to the Earth. You could run around it in a couple minutes. It's this road that leads to his planet is around a million kilometers long. Now, this is very important, and this will kind of end up playing in later for our speed scaling for the Saiyan Saga. Let's put a pin on Snake Road temporarily and start talking about the training that happened in King Kai's world. Goku goes through very vigorous physical and mental training, knowing that Vegeta and Nappa are coming to his planet and that they're going to take him out and they're going to take out his family. That is a very hard mental strain on Goku. We see the showcase later. It's not necessarily shown right there. But we know that his physical training is also a lot, given the fact that he's on 10 times gravity and he's doing all these physical activities that would otherwise be very easy on Earth that are not so easy here. He makes a comment that he can't even jump as high on this planet, even though he's jumping very high. It's not even close to what he's able to do on Earth. Now, after this training arc, we do get our first speed feat. It is stated by King Kai that he would be able to get back from Snake Road in two days. Now, this is very important because before this, after I put a pin in it before, I said that we get back to it. The important thing is that before, this took him six months to get down. This took him six months. We get a statement from, I believe, Tian Shanhan where he says that it, six months have passed. And then right after that, we see Goku get to the end of Snake Road. Meaning that it took him six months to get from the beginning of Snake Road to the end. And now it would only take him two days. After the calculations of converting kilometers into meters and converting two days into seconds, we get a hypersonic plus feat for Goku. Meaning that Goku is hypersonic plus for being able to traverse Snake Road. The first thing that we end up seeing is the showcase of Nappa and Vegeta. Now, this is very important because we get our actual AP feat that I wanted to talk about. The AP feat that I want to talk about is basically once the showcase of Nappa and Vegeta happened, we could see that Nappa just basically uses his power and creates a massive earthquake. Now, this earthquake is mentioned on television. It's said is one of major magnitude. We also get this manga panel, which shows how much of the area is actually affected. Now, once we do a little bit of pixel scaling, we can see that the area of effect is around 3,585 kilometers, meaning that he affected that much of the earth just from coming down and it being a super small place to what they're used to and the fact that it's like 10 times less gravity than they're what they're used to given the fact that this is an earthquake that was rupturing cities and able to do a lot of stuff even near its epicenter and away from its epicenter as well we can actually convert this into jewels using our earthquake formulas that we have and we can get around moon level for this attack now if you don't want to use the 9.6 as the magnitude if you think that this was a lot less then i guess this feat would be dropped but given the fact that it affected 3,000 kilometers plus of area and it wasn't just the initial blast that actually did damage it was the earthquake as well because surrounding cities were falling down i think that this is pretty valid for using that and i think that this moon level feat is actually pretty consistent within the series
So why this ends up being very important to us is because we know the first person that Goku fights when he comes back after the showcase of his new power and everyone saying, wow, he's so strong. And even people making a comment, I believe it was Vegeta making a comment on how much his power level was um, and how he wasn't as weak as he thought he was going to be. We see that he ends up fighting Nappa. Now him scaling to Nappa, him just utterly blitzing Nappa and being able to beat the shit out of him without even trying too much just kind of shows that he would scale to Nappa. This very casual Nappa that was able to complete this moon feat at the very least and he would definitely scale to an even stronger Nappa that was pretty enraged. So where the higher scaling for the Saiyan Saga would come in is actually through Vegeta at full power. Now the problem with Vegeta at full power is we get the statement that Goku even says it himself that he's no match for Vegeta. When Goku is during the fight, he says it, and even when he's on the ground after basically dead, he says that he's no match for Vegeta at full power. Which means that Goku using Kaioken wouldn't even scale to this because we know that he had to use times three to be able to match Vegeta, and times three is not something that he can consistently do because it tears apart his body. He said that he had to push himself to times three, and after using times three three he was pretty much dead already i would give it some leeway if he was using times two because kyle ken times two is something that he can use pretty consistently but even after his jump to power level twenty four thousand, he still wasn't even winning by that much and a full power Vegeta has the statements of being able to destroy the world, which is where that comes into play. So I think a Vegeta would probably be around planetary, but Goku at his power level, who is weaker than Vegeta, just would not scale to this attack, or he would not scale to this Vegeta who is able to complete an attack that is just like this. Once again, I will reiterate that I do not think how Ken times three is a multiplier that can be applied for consistent scaling because he cannot use it consistently. It is said that it will absolutely destroy his body when he's doing this. He won't be able to keep it up and he had to use this to be able to match Vegeta after he used Kyle Ken times two. It just wasn't nearly enough. So he had to move on to this. So yeah, I don't think he can scale to this consistently, but I do think that the Saiyan Saga in general at the peak of their scaling would come from Vegeta. In the Saiyan Saga, towards the end at the fight with Vegeta, we do get some very important information, such as things like the Spirit Bomb. The Spirit Bomb, basically, Goku is just taking in the key and the energy from all around the world to be able to use it as his, like, final attack. He did end up getting most of it dispersed when he was hit his last time, but he still had enough to give to Krillin, and that was enough to force Vegeta to go back and retreat uh, and give them some more time and end up saving Goku. Now, I'm afraid that some of you might mention this stuff with Piccolo. Now, for the speed feed of Piccolo, we do not have a time frame for his special beam cannon or even his key blast. There's nothing that is given for those type of things. So his key blast that did end up destroying the moon, there's no time frame for that. We can't just make up a time frame. Um, I'm afraid that we do not have enough information to logically deduct a time frame for this. So I, I cannot deduct a speed out of this whatsoever. I'm afraid. So there's no speed that comes with that. As well as destroying the moon, this would be more of a moon level feat. Because if you think about it like this, if this were to be anything like planetary or large planetary it would completely contradict what's already happened in the series vegeta with his power level would be eclipsing piccolo's power level of around 408 whatever it was there would be no consistency that vegeta at full power destroying the earth would be the same thing as piccolo at a power level of 400 destroying the moon also being large planetary it just doesn't make much sense there's no consistency that lies with there so i'm sorry but that feed is just like at around moon level which is fine that's like where napa would scale relatively off casual and that's where he scaled to off of his key blast so i think that that makes sense but yeah, that's all that I got for you guys. My final write-up for the Saiyan Saga Goku would be right at Hypersonic Plus and Moon Level.